Three, two, one. Hi, this is Michael Buffer, and let's get ready for EJ Boxing Live. How you doing, Fire Fans? EJ Boxing Live here. So we're going to hear Telly Atlas post-reaction to Dillian White losing to Alexander Povetkin. So, um, okay, here's the question posed, and uh, we're just going to chop in every every so often into what was being said. Edit. Povetkin for the slick punch versus saying Dillian yep. got a little bit too relaxed there. Like what, 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 all of it, it's all it's all part of it. Yes. Yep. All part of it. Listen. Go ahead, Teddy. Talk about talk about talk on it, Teddy. Also happens. Technique is part of it. Yep. Dillian Povetkin should have been that close. Yep. I'm being very careful here because I'll tell you this. It's yeah, true. When you are at this, it has to be. Go ahead, Teddy. Tell him. He shouldn't have been that close. Dean hasn't developed it. He has. You see that there, right there? Right now. So, Angela Dundee said that when you're a tall fight, you keep him tall. When you're a short fight, keep him short. You know, it's not hard. not science. It's what he is. Dylan's the taller fighter. Not considerably that much, but he's a taller. Definitely got a longer reach. So you need to use your assets and to keep breaking the fire down. So the fact that you're fighting in close to this fight, you're gambling, you're gambling, you're just gambling. The fact that he got that close, it shouldn't happen. It shouldn't have been, it shouldn't have been ironed out in training. And you can see in, in the uh, build-up that had the body bag and Dylan was hitting close. That's not where you want Dylan to be. It's not where you want him to be when you're fighting against a dangerous fighter like Povetkin. So go ahead, Teddy. Go ahead, Teddy. Let's talk some more. Talk on it, Teddy. Enough. He's extraordinary in a lot of ways, what I'd say. But he hasn't developed enough. Mm -hmm. And I don't think he realizes it. I think he just shrugs it off. I made a mistake. Well, we know that. But why? Yeah, why did you make why? the mistake? Exactly. Why, Teddy? How? Go on, Teddy. Break it down. He, he hasn't... He hasn't... Go on, Teddy. Tell developed him. ...developed an identity yet. And, oh. and and he probably had trouble at this point, maybe it's a good point digesting that identity in boxes, everything. Know who you are. So, do is who is Dillian? What what kind of fire is he? Well, yes, we know he's an emotional fighter, but what kind of fire is he? So, I mentioned the word fighter, but I don't say boxer, he's a fighter. What kind of fighter is he? You can always, and this is a, this is the thing, right? The key for you people listening. A person who's fight has street fights. You can train that person to box, but you can't necessarily train someone who can box as a fighter. But people think that's the same. Goes no. Nah. Some people have an instinct. If someone tries to hit you on the road, and people want to talk it out or whatever, the fighter naturally is just going to start throwing punches. That's who Dillian White is. He's a fighter. And what happened in that fight? He forgot, in my opinion, to see that he was a fighter. So Teddy Atlas is trying to talk about his identity. Dylan White is still trying to build on his character because he's still learning as this is going on. Even though he's a contender for the number one position, he's still learning at this point. But he lost his identity of who he does and what he's achieved at this point because of you know the trouble with the drugs and all the other things coming up. But he's, his identity is Teddy Atlas is of who he is. Go ahead, Teddy. Let's talk, let's talk on it. But where... Identity is identity. You're, you're not Jake Lovato one minute and Ali the next. It, it's ingrained. It's like it's consistent. It's what it's it's you. It's your identity. You're not gonna go out and be, uh, you know, Tom Cruise uh, <laughs> later. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. You're, you're Ken Ryder. Right out. You're not. You're not gonna. You're not gonna do that. I mean, it's your identity. It's got to be consistent. He hasn't really formed his identity where yep. at his size yes tell him he needs to Fight. be set on his feet at all times yep and control real estate yeah keep the man out on the outside he needs to be the king of his kingdom yep his kingdom is in front of him don't let no one he has to be the lord of everything in front of him don't let no one inside he has to have a line that people don't cross don't cross they don't cross that's it he's in a tower and they don't get past that. That's it. That he, he makes sure that they don't cross yep. that line. Yep. And if they do, he has to know how to react. Okay. Like like a guy coming up the hill, you're in a wall. And a guy, he does get past the tower somehow or gets in close. Yep. What do you do? You, you stand there throwing. 
he's near your tower now. What do you do? He, he has infiltrated space that <laughs> shouldn't be infiltrated. <laughs> Listen, that one there is space. That he, you see, this is what I'm saying. Now, Dylan made him pay with the left hook, and he made Derek Jura pay when he came into that space. But when, when Povetkin came to that space, he didn't make him pay. He tried to, but he didn't. He missed with the right hand. Povetkin was up underneath him, and the upper cup came underneath him. But he didn't make him pay for going in there. He wasn't consistently. Therein lies the, mis the first mistake of what happened. And, you know, you have to, these are the things that you have to be eyeing out and keep working and working. Don't let no one get into that area. Don't let no one infiltrate into your space. They have to make them pay for coming in that's in, into the area. That's it. What I would say was when someone comes in and then Lennox Lewis would do, you tie them up and lean on them if you're the taller guy. You do not exchange with a shorter guy in that range. That's where he's that's where he's his strengths at. You you work to your strengths. You keep them outside and you keep busy and fast. When they come in there, you tie them up immediately, right? You don't try and fight with them. Um, you could make them pay as soon as they come in, as they're coming in with with you know, with with hard body shots as they come in, but you don't, you do not, do not try to fight with a fighter as, as lethal as Povetkin in, in that area. You do not. Absolutely not. Go ahead, Teddy. You go to DevCom 3. This has to be taught. Immediately, he's, he's down near you. He can chuck a grenade at <laughs> So now it's not a matter of, now it's Stepcom free. Get out of the tower. <laughs> Get out of the tower. <laughs> Once Pavetkin infiltrated Into that, that space, space yep. he shouldn't have. But he did. Yep. Once he infiltrated that space, get your head off. Get out of the tower. Mm -hmm. Don't throw back. Get out of the tower. Absolutely. Those little nuances. Hmm. They got to be taught. They got to be experienced. They got. This kid hasn't had that. Nah. He hasn't had that. Nope. I don't think he realizes it, to be quite honest. Mm -hmm. So to that extent, because he he trusts his instincts, he trusts his natural abilities, yep. what he's been through in life. I agree with him. They've done an extraordinary job, but there's still more to this business that hasn't been touched on. You understand? You're with me? I'm with you. It, yeah. it hasn't been touched on. And again, your identity, where you always set, where you're keeping a guy in front, you're not letting him get. I, Go on, Teddy. Break it down, man. You have to work on that, those yep. habits. Yep. The habits. Yes, Consistency. the experience and heart yep. of perfecting saved Teddy. him. Mm -hmm. I, I give him credit. Getting up the floor twice, yeah, in the fourth round. But also his technique, technique, his habits. Yep. Pulled us out of the fire film. And fire. the lack of certain habits that I'm touching on yeah. allowed the door to open. Open, open. The lack of it on white side. Yep. That's what happened. Mm. You have to look at these things. Yep. That's what happened. You don't you Cut. don't see these top, you never see some of these top guys get caught in that sort that of area. kind of they get caught, they get broken down. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a collection of punches, you know, it's a barrage. It's, they get worn down. But never like that. Time to clean. But that kind of position, yeah. you rarely see that. Yep. Like, you're like, you, I'm going to go to a different level. I get it. Different stratosphere, Ooh. and a different weight class. Tell if you me. take one of the greats for me in our time, Roberto my man was Sugar Ray Leonard. Yeah, Sugar Ray and Leonard. When he was Sugar Ray Leonard, you, one of the things that made him great, even in the Durant fight, his his first loss, he never got hit two in a row. Okay, like like it wasn't about just right always coming back right. Like he got hit one boom. He he never got hit two in a row. Mm -hmm. Didn't get hit two in a row in the Durant fight. The big, fight. I, I, you know, that was that was how these guys are. So what I'm saying is, once that jab hit, yeah, once he was that close. And that jab, that Povetkin threw, once it hit, because it was the jab before the left uppercut, once that jab landed on Sugar Ray Leonard, whoop, and it wouldn't have been he timing the right hand back because he was already he already infiltrated space. Mm -hmm. You understand? It was step count three. Yeah, danger. So as soon as he got hit, he would have, and then the rest would have came. Yeah, that would have been the instinct. 
the teaching, the understanding mm -hmm. of that. And it wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying is there's a lot to this business. Yep. That's why it's so sweet science. Yes. And sweet science. What Perfectkin's technique. I'm not trying to take credit, but you trained him. I was in I was with him for two years. Oh, two years. Okay. I thought it was five. That's long. That's when, long. When he they brought him to me, he had just fought Eddie Chambers on HBO. He was getting hit right hands like they were giving it away in the country fair. Mm -hmm. And they were concerned because they knew he had to go for bigger. Eddie Fez, Fez Eddie Chambers from Philly wasn't yeah. a puncher. He was a pretty decent guy, solid guy, but not a puncher. Yeah. And they knew they were going to go up to, there was a guy waiting for him named Fudgeko. He could punch. So they knew that they had to correct this. So they brought him to me. Yeah. And the first thing I worked on is, why are you getting hit with these punches? Mm -hmm. Move his head. You have to understand this. We have to correct this. Yes. Part of it was he was throwing a jab just to throw it. Mm -hmm. Because his mind was just about being busy. Mm -hmm. Like it was in the amateurs. Just overwhelm the guy. So it wasn't about throwing at the right time, the right place. It was like every place, every time was right. Mm -hmm. As long as you're throwing and out throwing. And he got away with it, mm -hmm. you know, in three round fights. And, but then I showed him, you can't throw a jab. Sometimes a jab is the worst thing you can do. Mm -hmm. You expose yourself. You can only throw it when the guy's not set to throw right hand. When you got the right position, the right distance to throw it, where you're safe. Maybe you got to go over here to throw it. But you have to know what you're doing with that. And same thing with just throwing punches and bunches. He was doing that, but yeah. he was just throwing. He wasn't throwing for the right reason. Well, think at the about right time. Yeah. He was just throwing punches. Yeah, he wasn't thinking. And he had to learn all these things. Mm. Two years. I remember when Tim Bradley. Oh, yeah, Tim Bradley as well. Life, they called me up. And um, they had just fought Vargas. Timmy was a oh, uh, that was terrific champion. Hard and, fight. And he had just barely survived against Vargas. Yeah. And, you know, a few fights before that, of course, he took a lot of punishment from Povetkin. Mm -hmm. Not Povetkin. Povetkinov. Povetkinov. Yeah, Povetkinov. Yeah. Tough, tough guy. Yeah. And um, which was extraordinary. That, that was a good fight. Bradley was able to survive that and spoke to some of his great, you know, constitution. And yeah. Income. But he had just fought Vargas and Vargas in the last round caught him a right hand and you know, he barely survived. Ooh, the ride so was when good, I boy. took the responsibility to train, the first thing I said was, do you, I remember saying, make an analogy, so you believe in religion. <laughs> <laughs> and in the Catholic religion, there's two kinds of sins. <laughs> Menial sins, which, you know, uh, not that they're harmless, but they're funny. Smaller, or mortal sins. Mortal sins get you with the big red guy. <laughs> Pelly's funny as hell. The horns, yeah, they're, they're going to the hell. You know, with the horn, yeah. You don't want to do a mortal sin. And boxing are the things I'm talking about where you don't recover. Yeah. Well, no, it's over. Yep. You pay the ultimate. Menial sins are, they don't do that kind of damage. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I said is, we got to correct the mortal sins. <laughs> mortal sins. You got to know what they are. Yeah, you know. Every fight you're getting caught clean. Yep. You, you shouldn't get caught clean. Mm -hmm. Not that kind of clean. Not every, You shouldn't. Mm. You, you could do something about it. You're not aware of it. You gotta learn. You gotta be aware of it. You gotta understand yeah. what it is. And in that fight, what it was, he didn't realize until I showed it, was that Vargas had set him up. He had bent low as Timmy threw the chip. So Timmy didn't follow him. Timmy just kept looking here and you know, he didn't think nothing of it. He went low. He figured he wasn't a danger. But he was a danger. He was there in punching space low. Yep. So when he threw, he came up high. Bang! He never saw the punch. Mm -hmm. Just like White never saw the punch. Mm -hmm. So the thing I taught him was, everyone, oh, what do you do? You counter it? You come right back? No. The thing you do is once the guy, we don't want him to get there, but he got there. Once he's there, get out. Mm -hmm. He's down low. He might throw a grenade. On the top. Get man. out. Yep. Get out. 
And so the guy got low. I would tell him, we'll take care of the rest later. Yeah, move his head. With Dillian White. Dillian White, go I ahead. I watched some film on him. And the one thing, there's a lot of things you could talk about with a guy who on in seven. And again, extraordinary character that he got to this point. Yeah. But the one thing that I would have said to him, you're always getting hit clean. Like he, yeah. he got dropped in a Rivers fight, the fight before. Yeah. He got dropped in well, Parker. Know, he got dropped or just hurt. Uh, he got hurt in the uh Joseph Parker fight, isn't in it? the Parker fight. Yeah. He got hurt in the, like all the fights, you know, for the most part at this level, he was getting before the night was over, he was getting caught clean. Yeah. Shouldn't happen. I know you say, yeah, it's boxing. No, no, shouldn't get caught that kind of point. There's a reason <laughs> why you get caught. Yep, and and they, well, I'm sure the attitude was a fighter's attitude. You know, we're corrected. Did you really correct it? We're corrected. It won't happen next time. I'll be more alert or whatever. Yeah, but you can't be more alert if you're not aware of why you got caught, of when, why it's happening. Yep, 100%. You know, so. You're, you're a tightrope walker. Oh. You're, you're walking a thousand Take, feet above the Gambler. He's a gambler. Yep. You can't afford not to be alert. Again, I'm going backwards. You have to have every element that you need. Mm -hmm. That's part of the teaching too. The it's truth. not just X's and O's. To tell the guy, you, got, you, you bring the fear, nervousness, mm. awareness, alertness, control, not overwhelming, but control. But have it there when you're walking on that tight floor. Yeah. Be ready for a gust of wind. Be be alert. Be aware. Every second counts on it. Yeah, you have to be sharp. You don't man. just for a second so. Shrug. No. You have to be right on it, man. No. So he had been, he had gotten the warning signs, but he didn't take them. Hmm. It's hard, but he didn't correct the warning. He didn't pay heed to the warning signs. Yeah. Just, hey, <clears throat> I'm a guy. I'm still a work in progress to a certain point, whatever. And, you know, I just shrug it off. And no, no, no. It'll happen again. Mm -hmm. You have to understand what we're talking about here. Yep. You do. When he got hit with that punch, it reminded me of what you always say. And in, in most that? recently with regards to um, Nanito Denaire and and uh, in a way you said, when an old, with an older veteran, former champ, you can never count him out. You can never assume that he doesn't have one good fight left in him. And to that point, yeah. even one good round, or in this case, one good punch, because it looked like Dillian was boxing his ears in. He had him flopping all over the ring in the yeah. fourth. And then in the fifth, he, that was such a beautifully executed punch and just shut the lights off. But again, After he, the identity. He didn't make him pay. He never should have been there. Nah, I shouldn't have been there. She made him pay before oh, he came no, over. Lying. No, 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 oh, uh, mm. no, not in this business. No. And, and that's why when you would care for me, yep. you know, people say, "Oh, Teddy's too harsh." I've I've heard of, you know I've heard most of it. Oh, if Teddy's anyone too... thinks that you're too harsh, and if, yeah. if they've never been in camp with you, they have no idea how harsh it can be. There was no wasted <laughs> movements in anything. Nothing. Not one second of like. Lackadaisical. I tell you what, I'm learning. Else. I'm learning a it lot. Can't be lackadaisical. There's too much on the line. It's too much on the line. Like, you know, people say, "Oh, uh, one guy that I helped become a world champion." I won't talk about or mention. But, Matt Tyson. Uh, uh, what did he say? I want to be accurate. He said he had said that. Uh, Have a little game oh, plan. He's like a sergeant in the army. Yeah. He's like an army commando. Yeah. <laughs> I am. Yeah, he's on it, bro. You idiot. <laughs> I mean, this <laughs> business is unforgiving. <laughs> Teddy's crazy. Yeah, there's too much at stake. It's a serious. Oh, well, Teddy's so serious. It's a serious business. It's a serious business. It is, bro. It's a serious business. 100%. You don't know. And, you know, <laughs> I've been in you with that. I got Alex would throw uh, something, and the, the guy. Dangerous. Over, he, and he didn't get hit. Nothing. And I'd stop it. i get in the ring. Stop! He didn't get hit, but you will. You you took for granted that the guy was here, mm -hmm. and he didn't throw back the left hook or whatever. You should have immediately. You you should have felt it. Mm. You you knew where he was. That he wasn't there no more. So he's here. You you should have felt it. 
you know, I'm sure some of the people in the gym were like, this guy's nuts. Mm. <laughs> he didn't even get hit a punch. And look what he's doing. Look well, what maybe he's doing. he didn't get hit by the sparring partner, but, but the guys he's he prepared will. for might do. And listen, people that are trying to take a shot and say, <coughs> you know, we lost to better be up. He never got hit a blind punch with better be up. He was ready yeah. for everything. He got worn out, though, he though. He knew what to be ready for. He got broken down. Yeah, he got broken down. Yeah, he did get broken we down. He got broken down. That's part of my responsibility, too. Mm. My fault. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when, again, but I tell you one thing, we had the same scenario when we won the world title with Vosik against Stevenson, maybe the best puncher in boxing, if not behind Wilder as the second best, but a better boxer than Wilder. And he he had to be prepared for that one split moment of relaxing that it never happened. And he fought 12, 11 rounds, he stopped him 11, and it did happen once in the tent, and he almost got knocked out, but he survived it. Yeah. But it was that kind of fight that mm. there couldn't be a split second that you weren't in control of everything and aware of location, yeah. everything. Where the guy is. Where exactly. the guy was. Yep, 100%. And what happened in this fight. Dillian White. I remember telling perfect a million times teaching him, that after your jab, go on. At the very least, you move your head. Move your head so you don't get counted. Yes, right. Because he was getting it right your hands. So you, you move your head, mm -hmm. and if the guy and sometimes you can force a guy to do throw a punch. You hit him with the jab. You move, he's going to respond with a right hand sometimes. Yeah, and that's what he did. But the main thing is just a habit, and it was there. You jab, you move your head so you don't stand stationary, so you don't so you don't get hit. You move your head so mm -hmm. you don't get hit with right hand. Mm -hmm. So what did he do? He, he knew he had to take control after being dropped twice. He came in. He got in. He had to be in a certain position. He got into that position. And the warning sign, well, there. as much as he was winning the battles, maybe he was getting ready to lose the war. Why? Again, very hard to, to look at. I yeah. get it. Yeah, yeah, I get yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Because I was thinking when I was watching it, Ken, I was shocked with this suddenly, but I wasn't shocked beyond that. No. I wasn't. You know why? Go ahead, Danny. Go I was ahead. watching a fight and I was saying, I text, I tweeted it. So I'm not just talking. I tweeted it. <laughs> I said, he's getting him too close. Yeah. Too easy. Yeah. White he's needs to, to own the out, outside and body. make Pavek can care pay. The body. I can't pay on the, the way position. in. Let Pavek The guy with Pavek short in. arms and who could punch him, who was a former world champion. You don't let him in. He's fighting a tall guy. Should be getting in there. Shouldn't be getting in there. Get in there. Like, yeah. They should be getting a lot. It's like walking in the White House. Yep. I want to see the press. <laughs> you, just, you walk in out doing pretty good. And you just keep yep. walking down the hallway. You shouldn't get that far. <laughs> shouldn't get that close. <laughs> shouldn't get that close in, man. You know? Yeah. So, 100%. I said the same thing. There, it's like, you're going to make him pay. It's something's going to gonna something's gonna happen. Not be good. Yeah. Something's not going to be good. Yep. You keep I was thinking that. Mm -hmm. So, he got in. He got in. He hit a chip, and he did what he was taught. He moved his head because that's what you do mm -hmm. to not get counted. And you're in position. If the guy throws the right hand, you're in position to hit him with a counter. Mm -hmm. And I remember teaching him in the chip. You know the the more traditional side you know, tick tock oh, side to hit side. Him with the left hook. Yeah. But I said sometimes go over there and come underneath and give it the same look as the, it's going to be the left hook. Mm -hmm. But you have the option to throw in the uppercut mm -hmm. because most guys don't do that. They usually throw the left hook. Yeah, the uppercut is less frequently used, mm -hmm. but it can be very dangerous, very yeah, yeah, effective that, because mm -hmm. the guy's not expecting it from that angle. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the eyes of White again when he got in there, he was just looking at his own business. Yeah, no, no. Different business now, Ken. <laughs> Different business, baby. Yeah. It's changed. He got in. Different business. <laughs> you know, again, no two hundred amateurs. I, I'm just saying, but you got to be taught to, aware, understand that. Teddy's getting in, man. So when all you saw, if you saw White's eyes, 
He wasn't thinking about what was over there. Nope. He, was, he should have been. Mm. He was just just thinking about coming right back. Once the guy infiltrated that space danger area. Yeah. It was that area X. Let's call it area X. Mm -hmm. Once he penetrated area X, you can't just throw back. He's in area X. <laughs> that's where the instinct, that's where that teaching. That's got to be there so you don't get hit. And that's where those guys don't get hit those kind of punches. That's why. And because yep. once he's in there, once he's there, you don't just throw back. No, he's in there. Wow. And if you saw the eyes, they were just, and it was just like, like, and I'm sure that, uh, again, he let up a little because he had knocked him down. So there was a little assumption, no assumption in this business, no taken for granted. No, that's your enemy. Mm -hmm. That's your enemy. That's your enemy. Yep. That's your enemy. There's none of that allowed. Don't touch his gloves. That's why I'm a maniac in the gym. Yeah, I can imagine. He can't have that. Yeah. Those are habits, too. It's not just a habit. So you jab, rotate it clockwise, have you chin it to your shoulder, cover real fast. <laughs> no, it's not just those habits. It's these habits. They weren't taught. They weren't brought out. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. What did you think about when White had him down the two times? He was very nonchalant yeah. after he knocked him down and looked like he was really taking his time. Do you think he should have maybe jumped on him a little so bit more? Jumped on was, him. It seemed like he was conscious not to do that. I'm not going to be a Monday morning quarterback. You know jumped. that. Yeah, should have no, jumped. No, but I'm I'm saying, I want to hear your opinion. But no. I'm going to say what I him. would say. So um, without defending myself to those haters out there, <laughs> I'm going to say because I say it. Go on, Teddy. I say before the fight, too. Cuss and me had a philosophy. Cuss taught me. Cuss the motto. Cuss the motto. Yeah. Go ahead. And now, the first thing you could say is, hey, he was being careful. Stop, Teddy. Don't knock him. He was being careful. Guy's still experienced. He's still wily. Yeah. All right. You want to get away with that? Fine. Mm -hmm. Fine. You know, he was being careful. He's cautious. The later it goes, the better for him. He's younger. All that stuff. Mm -hmm. I guess that went out the window, Ken. And so, you know, so you can say that. You can say, well, he was being cautious, you know. And, and yeah, first of all, know what you got in front of you. You got a 40 year old guy, you got an experienced guy, and you got a dangerous guy. Mm -hmm. You know what Cus always taught me? Go ahead, Teddy. You're still going to be smart. You still don't want to be reckless. Don't get me wrong. That's your responsibility anyway. Mm -hmm. You know what he always told me? Teddy, when you got your guy in there with a dangerous guy, get him out of here! <laughs> <laughs> That's what he taught me. Again, knock him out. Do it right. Do it behind the gym. Give him a little fake to make sure he's not looking to sneak a punch while he's hurt because he could be dangerous when he's hurt. Yeah. Get him out of there! Knock him out, man. That's what That's he means. That's my philosophy taught by cuts. You got a dangerous guy, get him out of there. When he's hurt, get him out of finish there. him off. Get him out of there. Finish him off. That's right. You don't want to be in the locker room. Sorry, you didn't get him out of there. Yeah. You yeah. don't want to give him any more chances. You got him in the, with an advantage mm -hmm. to get him out of there. Get fin him out of finish there. him off. Get him out of there. And um, instead of him, and and it, it sir, it, it played that way because instead White had to put. Um, but Beckton had the control for a minute mm -hmm. where he was able to get away instead of being kept where he would have been kept at the end of punches mm -hmm. hurt. He was able to get to where he could do the hurting. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, you're not going to get a more um, comprehensive breakdown than that. Uh, but, you know, That's it. I, I, I give that kind of breakdown Maybe subconsciously, I want to help the kid if it could help him. Yeah, you wanted to help him. Oh, you okay. did. Yeah, you did. But I also want to educate, you know. I want the fans to appreciate as the, much as possible. The sweet science. Job is what goes into this. Mm -hmm. that it, it's know, not, it's, it's not, not about bigger, stronger. No, nah, it's not. It's not just about chucking punches. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just about that. It's about a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. A lot more than that. 
And um, again, credit, you know, credit to prevention. Credit to prevention uh, for surviving when he had to and then, you know, doing what he had to. And um, winning the title, at, you know, winning an interim title at the age of uh, <clears throat> 40. almost 41, basically. Yeah. You know, pretty damn good. Pretty damn yeah. good. Yeah. Give him credit for his, his character and, and his everything else that was part of that win. 100%. That night, and give credit to Dillian White, not making excuses. Uh, you know, I saw he was wearing a big heavy vest too, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that wild bulletproof vest in case any of the snipers that live in Eddie Hearn's house actually. He was wearing him. a he was <laughs> he was wearing a pretty heavy costume, right? Yeah, and you know, probably just as heavy as uh, Wilder's. I yep. would say it looked pretty heavy. Yeah, I don't know if it was forty five pounds, but it was. It looked like it was. <laughs> and um, you didn't hear nothing about that, rightfully so. Thank goodness, but yeah. you didn't hear nothing about that. Yeah, well, Dillian White's ready for a rematch. I'm surprised that they had a rematch clause in that thing, but credit to uh, Eddie, Eddie, Eddie Hearn, the uh, master showman. I yeah, well, Eddie Hearn, Eddie Hearn had a rematch clause, the fight was a voluntary, so that's what it was. PMC, a lot of people giving Teddy Atlas credit for the move, yeah, move. Pervet can put on a white. Well, he taught him that. He taught him that PMC. He taught him that move where you go, where you dip to the left, and then usually it's a left hook, but he did to left and bring the left uppercut. Up. He taught him that move, you know what I'm saying? Because after he punches, you move your head. This is the thing that I know from the trainers. I'm in the gym as well, especially that kind of style with the short guys. Finish, they, when they finish the punch, they move their head, you know what I'm saying? Side to side. So um, Teddy Atlas, that was Teddy Atlas's breakdown. Hope you guys appreciated it. It's right on the money. You have to make the uh, the short guy pay for coming in uh, real estate. Either, in my opinion, like Lennox Lewis, you tie them up. Um, you don't fight them inside. Or um, when they come in, you hit them with something hard. Especially when you, and the Telly Atlas also said, when you got a chance to finish someone or someone off, you jump on them and finish them off. Especially if they're dangerous, you get them out of here. Get them out of here. I'm EJ Boxing Live. Hope you appreciate this breakdown. Give me the thumbs up, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.